Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 38. Hey, if you want to download this Excel file or the PDF file, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're talking about Chapter 6, Continuous Probability Distributions, and we want to talk about the uniform distribution. Now, what in the world is a uniform distribution? Well, just imagine this histogram here. This is for test scores. 20 people got from 40 to 60 points. 15 people got 60 to 80, and 5 people got 80 to 100. Normally, the columns for a histogram are different heights. That means the count for each would be different, and the relative frequencies would be different. But now imagine this. Same categories down here, but every single category got the same count, which means it would have the same relative frequency or probability. Now let's go look over in Excel on sheet uniform one. Here's a different picture, right? Here's all of our testing categories. 22 people got 70 to 80. 15 people got 80 to 90. But now imagine this. Exactly 10 people scored in each category. 10 categories, frequency 10 in each. That means if you calculated the probability for all of these categories, they would all be 0 0.10. That's a uniform distribution. Now let's go look over here on U2. Here's another example. This is the uh, calculating we'll do for waiting times for customer service. Imagine they collected all these times during peak hours, and the absolute smallest amount of time was five minutes all the way up to 25 minutes. But when they calculated the frequency, they're all about the same. Now remember, we're always talking about models. So this is definitely close enough to a uniform probability distribution to use the probability techniques we're going to learn for the uniform distribution. Man, look at that. Let's go back over to our PDFs. And we want to talk about geometry. Now the uniform probability distribution, as always, all area within the range will be 1. This will be our range right here. Now, we're only talking about a certain range. All possibilities might be much bigger, but over just a certain range, we found this uniform probability distribution. And here's what we'll be given. We'll always have a lower and an upper. So for our service example, it was customers waiting 5 all the way up to 25 minutes on hold. So notice this is just plain geometry. The length of this side here, or the width, is going to be 25 minus 5, which is 20. Now the height is going to be, well, we'll prove what this is in just a moment. Let's scroll down here. Now, if all the area inside here is 1, that means height times width brrrp, times brrrp, that's going to be equal to R1. Well, notice we don't know the height yet, but we do know the width. It's going to be B minus A. So if we take this little part and set it equal to 1, we'd get 1 equals height times width. Ah, but we could solve for height. Simply divide both sides by B minus A, and there is the height. So once we know the maximum and the minimum, we simply subtract them and go 1 divided by that difference, and that's going to be the height. It's not probability, but it will be the height of our rectangle. Well, that means that our f of x, our uniform probability density function, remember the density functions can't calculate probability, just height, is 1 divided by the difference between the max and the min. And this will be true for only the range a to b. Everywhere else will be 0. Let's scroll down. So in every problem, we'll have the min, the max, and our area equals height times width. Now we know it's the height times the width. So every time we're given two values, we simply subtract the difference and multiply by our height. And that will give us the probability between some particular x and some other particular x. That means, for example, min was 5 and max was 25. We could calculate the probability between 15 and 20 minutes waiting on hold. 
we're also going to have our mean or expected value. That will be a plus b divided by 2. And our standard deviation will be the square root of b minus a squared bloop, divided by 12. And then we'll take the square root. Now let's look at our example on paper, and then we'll do it over in Excel. Suppose the time that you wait on the telephone for a live representative of your phone company to discuss your problem with you is uniformly distributed between 5 and 25 minutes. What is the mean wait time? What is the standard deviation? Is What is the probability between 15 and 20 minutes? It's all about geometry, right? So we set up our variables. Our particular x and our particular two x's are 15 to 20 minutes. Our min and our max are 5 and 25 minutes. It always is helpful to draw a picture. And actually, in this chapter, we'll see how to draw pictures for all three of our distributions. I'm drawing a rectangle, right? There's the max. There's the min. Between 15 and 20, that little red area is going to be our probability. There's the height, 1 divided by max minus min. So 1 20th, which is give us about 0.05. We can calculate our mean. 30 divided by 2 is 15 minutes. And we can calculate our standard deviation. Plug in everything in. Boop, boop. So standard deviation of 5.77 minutes. So for this particular distribution, the average wait time is going to be 15 minutes with a standard deviation of 5.77 minutes. We can also calculate the probability between 15 and 20 minutes. There's the height. There's the width. 0 0.05 times 5 equals 0.25. It's all about geometry, right? Area equals probability, that little piece right there. The width is 20 minus 15. The height is 1 20th. You multiply them, and boom, there's your probability. And let's go over to Excel. Here's our same example. Suppose the time that you wait on the telephone for a live representative from your phone company to discuss your problem with you is uniformly distributed between 5 and 25 minutes. Let's calculate the mean standard deviation and solve for various probabilities. Now the low is going to be 5. The upper is going to be 25. Our particular x will start by saying 15 to 20 minutes. Now the key is, at least for me, is I'm going to draw pictures. So I'm going to draw a picture over here. And I'm just going to select some cells and then add some color. So this would be the outside one. I'm going to do the drop down up here and select some light color. Control-1 to do borders, because we're going to do some tricky things with borders. So we're going to need to use this dialog box. Border, I'm going to say outline. That's just the outside. Click OK. Now I want to have some inside area here. So I'm going to add a different color. So drop down and say red. Control-1, and I'm going to do the outside border. So that's looking OK there. Now I want to put the, the numbers down here. I'm going to start with equals and get the min. And I'm going to say equals and get the max. And so I'm making sure that the numbers on the, the here's the line right there that represents that uh, 25. We'll actually draw lines there in a second. Here I'm going to do equals one cell to my left plus 5. Control Enter and copy it over. And now I want to add some lines that come down. So right there, I want a line there and a line there. Now notice that these inside lines are inside lines, but then I want one on the outside, but not on this side. So Control-1, and here's where the borders come in. We can draw them. You select your line, then your color. And I want one on the outside. This would only give me one right there. But as soon as I click Inside, or you can use these buttons around here, that'll do all the inside ones. So click OK, and then click away, and there we have it. Now the height of this is going to be 1 divided by the difference. So I'm going to do this equals 1 divided by in parentheses. And I'm going to take straight from the numbers down here, the biggest one minus the smallest one, close parentheses, and Control Enter. Drawing pictures help. Now I want to go from this line 15 to 20. So I'm going to highlight, and it's all that area, and do something like sum. Dark. And if you can't find one in here, you can click there and then 
go to more colors and then pick some variant here. I'm going to pick something really dark, boop, like that. Click OK. And then Control-1, and I want some border outline. Click OK. So that's starting to give me a picture. Remember, it's all about area between some lower and some upper. Now we can come over here. I'm going to calculate the mean. And notice it's the Mac adding the min and the max divided by 2. So I'm just going to use the average function and average these two right here. So 15 minutes. The standard deviation equals square root tab. And I'm going to need to open parentheses and do max minus min. I could have gone down from over here, too. Square that and then divide by 12. Close parentheses and Control Enter. So Average wait time is 15 minutes with a standard deviation of 5.77. Now we can calculate some prob probability, and it's all geometry, width times height. So I'm going to say equals the height times in parentheses, and I'm doing 20 minus 15. I could have easily done it from those two numbers right there. I just whichever one, and Enter. There you go, 0.25. Now, I want to prove to myself, if this is true, is, this, is all the area there equal to 1? It better be. So I'm going to say equals, well, the height times the width. That's the max minus the min, close parentheses, and it better be equal to 1. You got it. Now, remember, we're dealing with uh, lines here. So this symbology here for greater than or equal to would be the same as that. It would be the same probability. All right, now let's scroll down, and we can do a different example here. We want to calculate the probability between 5 and 15 minutes. It's all about, oh, geometry. So the height times, hey, the max for our interval minus the min. That'll give me 10, right? So 10 times 0 0.05 would be 0.5. So the probability that we wait between 5 and 15 minutes is 0.5. Now we do have one other example. We can go over to Uniform 4. Now this one has to do with driving distance for the top 100 golfers on the PGA Tour from 2003. Distribution is uniform. That means people were driving from 110.6 to 284.7, more or less uniformly. So we can calculate the difference. That gives us the whole width here. So equals the max minus the min. Over this 25.9 yard distance, people were more or less driving uniformly. And here, we already calculated it down here, but I'm going to calculate equals 1 divided by that total difference from the max to the min uniform rectangle, Enter. So there is our height, width. And now we can calculate whatever two lower and upper values for our interval. So our first question is going to be this area right here. And I already drew the picture. I want to figure out the probability that you would drive between 290 and 284.7. So oh, and I'm going to do all of mine straight from my picture. So there is the height times the width. I'm going to do it from over here. I already drew the picture over there. So the Boop, the upper minus the lower in parentheses, and boom, the probability that we could drive between 284.7 and 290 is about 20%. Now, what about this area right here? I want to go from calculate the probability that we drive between 290 and 310.6 equals, hey, the height times the width. And I'm going to do it over here, even though I have it so close right there somehow feel more comfortable going, hey, that is the width, that is the height, and Enter. So the probability that we would drive between about 310 and 290, 80% almost. And finally, we want to calculate the probability between 290 and 300 equals the height times the width. Hey, 300 minus 290, that ought to be about 10 yards, right? So the probability that we drive between those two points, about 38 or 39%. All right, so 
uniform probability distribution. We saw a golf example. We saw a service time waiting on the phone example. And most importantly, we talked about the fact that it's all about geometry. Draw those pictures. All right, next video, we'll talk about the normal bell-shaped distribution. All right, see you next video.